You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Hello, James McConey. Hello, Jason Pine. What a day for you yesterday. The drama of the, the derby and what a game. Yeah, it was. It was quite the occasion. Um, the weather turned it on in Wellington. It was, a, it was a bit ropey in the morning, but uh, yeah, by the time it kicked off, the weather was fantastic. 26,000 there, James. Heaps of Auckland FC fans making a lot of noise down at the northern end. Great occasion for the game here. Do you know what? I think that's, I feel like that's the closest I've ever seen to a New Zealand game that felt like an FA Cup, you know, an FA Cup final or semi final. It just had the pageantry, the noise, just the tension, the intensity of the tackles. And look, I know it's never going to match the FA Cup final because you're not shaking hands with the Royals or anything like that. But, um, and, you know, there's a few, fewer fans, 26,000, I think it was. But well, what, it, what it showed, you in New Zealand is what we're capable of. It feels like a massive turning point for football and um, the only disappointing thing is that the Phoenix kind of threw it away. Yeah, it was a shame that it was decided in that way. Jacob Spoonley alongside me in commentary said this game feels like it's setting itself up for um, either a, a moment of brilliance or an error and unfortunately it was the latter. Um, you know, you still got to be there to capitalise and Jake Brimmer, you know, a, a terrific player and then got the second as well. Yeah, did did you? I, I kind of, I don't know. I feel like Auckland FC did enough to win the game, but it would have. But I, but then again, another part of me thinks, well, if it was a draw, that would have been fair too, even if the Phoenix had nicked one. I know. Well, I thought the Phoenix had the best chance. I can't believe. Um, I think it was a Shige who headed the ball down and over the bar. I think both you and um, Jacob Spurley said that it was harder to do than get it into the goal. And why he headed it, I'll never know. Um, but it's probably because he's, he's short and he thought, I'm going to dive at this, and it got to the point where he could have just prodded it home. That, to me, was the best chance of the game, and then um, and then calamity ensued, and I feel sorry for Olu Wayemu, who's just a, a young guy who's uh, from an uh, English-Nigerian guy who's got tons of potential, and Chiefy has been... And in the way that he is as a coach, given him that that chance and said, no, we believe in you. And now it's um, that was just a howler. Um, if, for people who didn't see it, he he cleared the ball, but only about three metres straight to a Auckland FC player who was what six yards from goal. I, I'm not sure if you heard me say before. You might not have, but um, at, at, after the game, you know, they uh, the fans all come down onto the pitch or one end of the pitch, and they line up, and, and the players go along and sign autographs and photos and stuff like that. He he stayed out the whole time. I mean, yeah. he could easily have gone and hid, but he he stayed out, signed every autograph, every photo, chatted to the fans. Was clearly you know distraught at what had happened, but mm. fronted up, stayed out there. Yeah, I know, and that, that's the thing. I mean, it was. Uh, unfortunately for the Yellow Fever and even the Phoenix organisation, I mean, they flew a plane over Mount Smart uh, the week before. So this is um, a, a humbling experience for them. But it means it's so tantalising for Derby number two, which is, I think, December the 7th at um, Go Media Mount Smart. So look, there were, the, the one thing I, I'd noted is that the um, Auckland FC must feel pretty chuffed at signing a whole lot of players from National League level domestic football and they were perfectly at home in A-League. In fact, they looked um, like they were the best on show as well. Hey, did you see the um, the billboard that um, Auckland put up? Yeah, yeah, the Ellington. The <laughs> yeah, the that's w- so Auckland. clever. Yeah. So clever, yeah. For those who haven't seen it, 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 the sign reads, Welcome to Wellington, but it actually reads, Welcome to Ellington. And underneath it says, we took the dub or the W back to Auckland. I think that's tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah. Long may it last. It's actually, I haven't seen football on this kind of high since the Bahrain game, um, which was 2009. And, and this is what I think New Zealand football's really needed. It's incredible to think that was 15 years ago, Piney. Probably my, one of my favourite experiences. But now I think fans in uh, Wellington and Auckland can look forward to some some really exciting times. Yep, looking forward to it. Hey, now we seem to talk about Wallace Satiti every week, but I feel like we should talk about Wallace Satiti again. Yeah, I think so. I think he's going to be the. Is, it, is there a breakthrough performance that World Rugby hands out? I mean, that's going to him, surely, right? After that test match, he just 
looks so assured and um, good things happen when he's got the ball. He's, yeah, he, I don't know. He just looks like he's been there forever. And, yeah. you know, he's good in the loose, but he makes his tackles. He makes good decisions. The offload for Mark Talaya, but also off the pitch, by the sounds of it, he's just an absolute diamond of a human being. Oh, he really is a lovely guy. And this is his first season at any high level. Just bear in mind, first season of Super Rugby, straight into the All Blacks, um, forces his way into the top side. I mean, England will be gutted that Wallace Satiti has emerged as, because he could have just spent his year as a squad player, you know, but he was given a chance, took it with both hands. He's one of those rarities where he's hurting people um, without the ball, so he's so good at, in defence. But on attack, you're just so excited to see him um, in possession and that offload for Talia for the first try. But I've got to actually, if we're going to talk about this game, we really have to talk about Talia's finish for the second try. Incredible. Mm. Um, four tacklers, I'd say, he got rid of, uh, including George Ford. And that's foreshadowing to a moment that's coming up. Damien McKenzie probably silencing a few um, critics of, you know, who seem to uh, text into your show with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, with he, that silenced a f- he silenced a few. I can tell you he oh, hasn't silenced all of them. <laughs> no, he never silenced all of them, which is good, which is what we want. We're always going to be open for the criticism, right? And then um, George Ford missing a penalty and a drop goal, I think, it wasn't quite the same as the Phoenix throwing away the game, but I think by subbing Marcus Smith, the England first five, who is world-class talent, when he was having such a good game, and especially off the tee, I think that decided the, the test match in the end. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. Did you, get, did you get the chance to watch the rugby league last night? Yes, I did, and um, I, I love the Kiwis with all my heart, but it does feel like a work-in-progress Kiwis team. We've had to... And, I mean, this is no excuse, but we've had to bring Sean Johnson out of retirement. Um, let's, and uh, Joey Manu's gone off to rugby. So uh, it means that Jaron Hughes, Joseph Manu, and Nelson Asafa Solomon are probably our three, uh, three of our best players aren't there. I know it's no excuse um, because I think the talent was there to win it, but let's just accept that we are blooding players like, you know, Keanu Kinney, uh, the, the fullback, ran for over 200 metres. Just wait and see what this this kid can be in the in the Kiwis jersey. But look, I'm 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 a bit Matama Tonga really myself. I love that team, and um, they they came out of the block so fast, and it just took a couple of um, you know ex, uh, extremely um, gutsy tackles and uh, defensive plays to keep the Kiwis out. Yeah, indeed. It was uh, yeah, it was quite the contest. I, I um, mentioned before, I only read half an eye on it, but even when you look at the scoreboard and you see at half-time, <laughs> Tonga are 24-6 ahead. In fact, they were 24 nil up, weren't they, after 34 minutes? Um, and yeah. then you look at the final score, yeah, crazy old game, but no, well done to Tonga. And great crowd there too. You look into the stands at Mount Smart and it's equal measure red and black there for a Tonga Kiwis test. I feel like the Tongan fans are the best fans in the world. And um, that's, uh, I mean, they showed us in that 2011 World Cup, Rugby World Cup, what, what they could do. And I think it sort of um, inspired a lot of other fans to go, OK, yeah, we can do this too. But, I mean, there, there are obviously, you know, football fans from other nations who'd say, hey, we're, we're the ones that travel and support and all that sort of thing. But just seeing them come out with that kind of um, fervour and uh, passion and just basically create the atmosphere by themselves at the stadium, you would not have that for Kiwis versus Kangaroos. No, oh, 100%. 100%. Hey, just before you go cricket, uh, day, well, how many days have we had? Only two, haven't we? Um, where, what are we? 171 for nine in our second innings, lead of 143. So, yeah. well, I mean, when yeah, when Willow Rock comes into bat, I think you, you kind of get ready to, <laughs> you kind of get ready for things to wrap up, don't you? Uh, but so what? India will need 150 odd to win. They'll probably win the test. Doesn't actually matter, does it? We've won the series. Yeah, we've won the series. It's fine. It's a bit like with the netball, you know. Um, we won the Constellation Cup, and then you know, Dame Auntie Knowles just put out a whole lot of you know sort of experimental selections with this one. Well, we won the series without Kane Williamson, our best player, you know, for example. So we, we, they'll still be on a high. It's, it's just a bit gutting because they got themselves into almost good positions. But really, the, the one thing I think with this Black Cat side is 
Yeah, it's great that we've beaten India, but it does feel with so many players. I think um, eight of the eleven are gen- uh, over um, over thirty. There's going to be a bit of a changing of the guard at some point, and maybe a look at the lower middle order as well, just to see what happens there. And it just shows that how someone like B.J. Watling was just worth his weight in gold, and even uh, Daniel Vittori and Jake uh, Jake Boreham in their later years. You know how we had those. those those bottom order fight backs that we don't seem to have from uh, from this black cap side, but it's no real um, criticism, just something that maybe needs some t- tinkering. And uh, look, they're going to come home victorious, and they've made history. I've done. We need to um, we need to put the call out for that. You know, the next kind of um, cricketing prodigy. You know how Kane Williamson at school was famous; yeah. no one could get him out. He used to bat all day, every day. Um, and he, his dad even reversed the batting order one day to give everybody else a go. Same with Rach and Ravindra when he was coming through in Wellington. Everyone was talking about this yeah. kid out of Hutt International Boys School who was the next big thing. I want to know who that is now. Who, who's the who's this 15, 16-year-old who's just getting pots of runs around the country somewhere and no one can get him out? Well, maybe you and I need to go away and work on that. You go to Hutt <laughs> Hutt's International Boys School. <laughs> All right. I'll go to Hamilton Boys High because that's where Mitchell Santner came out of. And um, between H- H- Hibs, is that what they call Hibs? They call, boys? Yeah, Hibs, that's it. Between Hibs and Ham Boys, we'll find a, the new prodigy. I guarantee next week's show we'll be naming names and uh, basically giving us some hope for the future. Love it. Good man, James. Good to chat as always, mate. Always love our chats. James McConey, big part of our Sundays here on News Talk ZB. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.